morning, good morning everybody. How is everybody doing out there in YouTube land today? Well, here we are, driving across the beautiful state of Wisconsin. I don't know about you guys, but I think Wisconsin's absolutely beautiful. I love this state. It is a gorgeous state. It's the right time of year. <laughs> well, we'll clarify it that way. Uh, I don't like it too much here from basically November through April. Let's put it that way. I'll take a pass. But the rest of the year, it's gorgeous. Uh, it's kind of funny. Let's see, what are we going to talk about? I got good news today. And I got bad news today. Well, what do you want first? Good news or the bad news? Okay. Well, we'll go with some good news. Um, I got an offer on my land. As a matter of fact, the offer was for three times what I paid for it ten years ago. Oh, there's some good news. And, uh, what else do we have for good news? Oh, starting out this morning, I was getting fuel at the pilot. And uh, while I was sitting there waiting for the fuel to fill up the tanks, some guy come over the radio and goes, It's a beautiful day to be alive. Thank you, Jesus, for all the glory you bestow upon us. And I keep keyed up the mic and I went, Praise God. May God bless each and every one of us. That's all I said. And you come back to hey man, brother. So, you know, it's, it's little things like that that actually kind of make for a good day. And you notice how I always like to end my video. Uh, be nice to each other, right? Be kind to each other. And, and that was the main message uh, from Jesus Christ. If you get that right, be nice to your fellow man find out that everything else in life kind of falls in order. But it's it's, it's that being nice to each other. Uh, it's contagious. You know, absolutely contagious. So when you start off the good day, you know, you go in to pay for your fuel and uh, and the, the person behind the counter is nice and smile and respectful and treats you like a, a nice human being. You know what I mean? And, and the people you walk by, they're like, good morning, or how are you? you know, everybody's in an upper spirit. You know, that makes for a beautiful day, all right? It's when everybody walks around going, you know, like they don't give a crap about each other. And basically, instead of saying good morning, go, man, F you, you know. It's a real sad world to live in. And I'm going to kind of tie this into something I see on YouTube, all right? Uh, and, and I'm going to be right up front with you. I do not watch trucker YouTube, trucking YouTube, hardly at all. Uh, I tell you, I, I've got some friends, you know, that are fellow YouTubers, truck drivers in the trucking genre. And these are guys I like. All right, I, I do call them friends. Uh, I just really don't like their content. Uh, I'll tell you right up front. When, uh, what I watch on YouTube is I watch things about cars, guns, farming, cattle, you know. Th these are the things that I'm interested in. So, that's what I watch on YouTube. And trucking genre, I don't want to watch trucking genre. Well, man, I drive a truck every day. Every day. Uh, where, where are you going to teach me how to back? You know, that type of thing. Come on. As our illustrious president says, come on, man. <laughs> what a waste of human flesh that is. Anyway... <laughs> Is that not a joke? That, that dude's our president. I, I, I have friends that go, and can you believe people voted for him? Uh, no, uh, I don't believe anybody actually voted for him. 
Uh, I don't think that's how that went down. Uh, anyway, I regret. Let me get back on track. So I really don't watch trucking YouTube too much. And what I do see a lot of, now there are, every once in a while, you know, I get a glimmer of hope in the trucking genre. Uh, somebody will do something nice, you know, kind of artsy fartsy, showing the world, the lifestyle, you know, perspective, uh, and an emotion with the lifestyle. Because come on, this is a lifestyle. And I describe it a little bit different than a lot of people do. You know, I consider us OTR drivers out here, like we're the last of the cowboys. We're the last of the real cowboys. You know, we're out here moving freight across the plains, across the station, all by yourself, all by your lonesome. It's all on you, right? That independent, that attitude that you can overcome whatever the world throws at you. That you can stand on your own two feet. That you can be independent. Yeah, it's all that, right? That's the way I see it. So when I see somebody doing something like that, exploring that perspective of it, uh, I'm going to watch that. You know, because it makes me feel good about what I'm doing, right? But if your content, all your content is, is talking about another YouTuber and the majority, 99% of the time when people are talking about other YouTubers they're talking about a, what an absolute piece of crap they are. If that's what all your content is and, and hey, if you're a friend of mine and you put up a video I'm going to turn on your video. But when you're just talking crap about somebody else, uh, I'm turning you off in probably under three minutes, just to let you know. You know if you're, you're talking about life or the lifestyle or, you know, something I'd actually be interested in, I'll, I'll watch your video. But if you're just gossiping about somebody else or saying, oh, he made me mad, he said bad things about me. If that's what your video is about, uh, I don't need that shit in my life, all right? I'll just tell you right off that. Now, I had a good friend, you know, a fellow truck driver, and, and he's a good friend. But uh, I spent probably half of my adult life living on the West Coast. And I always have other things going on other than my professional life. That's what I consider being well-rounded and successful. Is when you're successful, you can't be just in one area. You need to be successful in all areas. Your relationships with other people, your family, uh, you know, your own household, your business, what you do for a living, uh, what you do for entertainment, what you do for recreation. All these different things added up together is what true success is. If you only got one, well, you're only successful in one area of your life. You need to be well-rounded, successful in all the different things in your life. So I have always have a hobby. And my hobby, I take just as serious as my profession, all right? Now, I talk about skydiving quite a bit because that was my... Not my last hobby, but my hobby before my last hobby. And I skydived professionally for 13 years. And was in and out of skydiving total probably 18 years. So that was a big segment of my life. But before that, I surfed. You know, I lived out on the West Coast. I lived in California. Uh, I tell you where I lived, uh, don't be jealous, but I lived on the beach in uh, La Jolla. And before I lived on the beach in La Jolla, I lived on the beach in Carlsbad. And for those of you who don't know, that's just north of San Diego. Uh, La Jolla is considered the golden triangle of uh, San Diego. And I'll, I'll just tell you, it's 
some of the most expensive real estate in the world. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, that's back back when I thought I had money. But anyway, I surfed hard for you know over 13 years. I surfed every curl from the southern tip of Baja all the way up to LA. Uh, I know every curl, every break. I mean. That was like my life, other than my business, right? So, living on the coast and surfing every day for that long, I picked up the dialect. And it's naturally, for me, to, if people listen to me talk, it's hard for them to figure out. They're trying to figure out, where the hell are you from, son? Because in one way, you sound like you're an Okie, and the other way, you sound like you're a surfer. So between growing up, country, rodeoing, surfing, skydiving, you know, my dialect is a little different than most. Like, I said, you constantly hear me say, yo, dude, dude. That's my natural dialect because I literally lived on the beach almost half of my adult life. So yeah, you pick up the dialect, right? Same thing if you lived in Japan, you know? So, you know, it's just, it's life. But anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is I had a good friend in high school, you know, and we grew up country. As a matter of fact, uh, we rodeoed together quite a bit. But he was talking to me on the phone, and uh, you know there, there's a difference between laughing with somebody and laughing at somebody. And uh, he kept going on and on about the way I talk, making fun of the way I talk, and just laughing in my face. And uh, you know I, I let him know. I said, "Hey, dude, you know, offended the shit out of me." He kept going, just laughing, laughing. And, and finally, I said, "Hey." Let me clue you in on something. Fuck you and hung up the phone. I don't need that shit in my life. I don't. And, and I would rather be a hermit and live all by my life, all by myself, than put up with any crap from anybody. There is absolutely nothing that requires you to put up with any crap from anybody else. You know, and some people are jealous of the way that I live, and they kind of want my lifestyle and and the values that I have in my life. But that's just holding to a certain standard. Don't accept anything less. A friend is somebody that makes you feel better about yourself and enhances your life. If they pull you down or there are negative effect in your life, uh, what do you need that for? Think about it. What do you need that for? What? Because you just can't stand I would rather be alone on this earth than deal with somebody else's crap. Just saying. So, I lost a, a good friend. He's like, man, you can't, shouldn't be so hard on me. Hey, dude, learn how to respect other people. You won't have a problem keeping friends. See ya. That's why I feel. The bad news. I kind of worked into the bad news, didn't I? This video's kind of turned into a rant. But, uh, here's the bad news. Now, as y'all know, Gilbert, was a trainee on my truck oh, several months ago. I don't know. It had to be about six months ago. Something like that. He got off my truck. Anyway, he's been driving OTR for about six months, I guess. Maybe longer. I don't know. But, uh, Gilbert uh, is getting ready to leave Magma. Matter of fact, he's uh, turning in his truck today in Fargo and catching a flight home. So, good.
Gilbert is leaving us today. Uh, I will tell you that Gilbert's one of my favorite people. Love Gilbert to death. Um, and I pray that we'll remain to be best friends, even not when he goes on to his next adventure. One thing that was really nice is uh, uh, night before last, I stopped over in the Chicago yard and decided to spend the night in the yard there because my clock was getting a little low. And guess who was there? Uh, Gilbert. So me and Gilbert got to hang out in the evening and chit chat, catch up, all that good stuff. But Gilbert is leaving Magnum. Now, He's not leaving Magnum because he didn't like the job. Matter of fact, he was telling me that he was going to put out a video uh, here, like today or tomorrow or whatever, about how that this is absolutely the best job that he has ever had in his life. And that's what he was talking to me about when uh, we were sitting there chit-chatting the night before last that this is absolutely the best job he's ever had in his life. But I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. When Gilbert contacted me, the first time he contacted me about coming out here driving OTR, he was in the Marine Corps. Let's see, if this guy's going to let me over, dude, I'll take off your bumper. If you can. Oh, there we go. What a nice guy. Everybody thinks I'm a nice guy. Right up until you're being inconsiderate or a bully, then I become your worst nightmare, right? But anyway, so uh, Gilbert. Gilbert contacted me while he was still in the Marine Corps. He had about 30 days left in the Corps, and he was thinking about getting out of the Marine Corps and go OTR. And when guys call me, and they're telling me that they're gonna get in, they wanted to get into truck driving, and they start asking me questions and stuff. Uh, I always ask them a bunch of questions. I want to see where they are in life, what they're thinking, what they're wanting. Because sometimes people's expectations just don't fall within reality whatsoever. And Gilbert was pretty headstrong on coming out here at OTR. But I asked him, I said, so are you married or single? He goes, I'm married. And I said, do you have any children? And he goes, yeah, I got two little girls. Mm. So how old are you little girls? Uh, I got one that's less than one, and I got one that's about three. I said, so you're, you're married? Been How long you been married? And he goes, you know, just a little over three years. I said, so a little accident going on over there. Little disco action, fire trucks, and all that good stuff. Anyway, so beautiful young wife, couple beautiful baby girls, just getting out of the Marine Corps. And uh, I told him straight up, I said, "Dude, you got no business coming out here, OTR." I said, "OTR is not for." A young married man with children. Uh, and and this, hey, I laid rock for 20 years raising my last daughter so that I could be a full time daddy. This is how important it is to be, to be a dad. And if you're going to be a daddy, that means you got to be there. Like I said, they may not remember what you bought them for. Uh, Christmas four years ago, but they'll remember if you were there or not. So I told Gilbert straight up, dude, you have no business coming out of your OTR. And then he called me back and he said, like, man, I really want to do this. And I said, well, I don't think it's in your best interest. And we went round and round about that. And I said, well, man, if you're going to do it, come on, I'll train you. I'll make sure you have the best start you can in the career. Come on, let's go. And uh, and by being that, you know, I trained him in this business. And he talked to me always about what was going on. And, you know, we'd talk about, you know, how to run his loads and how to make sure that he got the miles and his pay and all that stuff. But we also had those conversations. 
conversations with, uh, you know, home. Now, I'm not getting to see my, my, uh, he goes, he goes, you know, my little one doesn't even act like she knows who I am. And that just breaks my heart. And I totally get that. And I'm like, dude, if you're going to stay in this truck, you're going to miss the best part of your life. You know, we had those conversations. And I'm straight up with him. You know, I'm always that way. It's uh, what's best for the individual. I don't give a rat's ass what's best for me when advising somebody else what they should do. Anyway, he found a real good local job. Doesn't quite pay him as much as he can make here at Magnum. But pretty close. All right, pretty close. And uh, so we were talking about it back and forth. And he asked me what I thought. I said, dude, how are they? Beautiful wife, two baby girls. Go home, dude. Live your life. Be a daddy. Don't don't miss out on that part of your life. You know, then here you got 20 years. And we were talking uh, the other night, and I said, you know, he's telling me about how much he absolutely loves his job and best job he ever had. He likes the lifestyle. Rada, rada, rada. And I said, well, this is how it's probably going to go, dude. I, I did that. You know, I got in a truck for a couple of years early on in life and always said, you know, one day, I said, so you're going to raise your kids and one day you're going to be an empty nester. And the kids have all grown up, gone to college and graduated, and out starting their own life and you and Kimber are going to look at each other and go, what now? I said, go buy your truck. You and Kimber jump out there and go see the United States. Just play the rest of it. But anyway, that was my advice on that. The good, the bad, and the ugly, right? I think I covered all three today. Besides, this video has gone on way too long. I got another trainee to pick up uh, about the 20th of this month, uh, about two weeks from today. Just shy of two weeks in today. And uh, this young man, our recruiter, Tony, told me that... Uh, that ought to get along great with this guy because he's a fellow skydiver. He likes to jump out of perfectly good airplanes. I hate it when somebody says that. Why do you jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Uh, first of all, it's man-made bullshit. And there is no such thing. <laughs> Hell, if anybody knows that, truck drivers do, right? If it's man-made, it'll break. Guaranteed. But anyway, so this new trainee's a fellow jumper, so hopefully I think we'll get along pretty good. Pretty good. Right? We don't have to be friends, but you do have to become a good truck driver. That's the goal, right? But being friends, that's a bonus. Alright, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I've yacked long enough. Besides, i got to give my driver manager a call. i got stuff to 